Ladies and gentlemen, what is up? Welcome to SmackDown. Tonight we begin with Austin Aries, the light heavyweight champion, versus former light heavyweight champion Daniel Bryan. Austin Aries coming in at 2-3, Daniel Bryan at 3-8. and eight. He's got some debt to work off. We have Neville on commentary. Neville might be a factor in this matchup. Neville versus Aries, final match at SummerSlam for the championship. It's been an awesome rivalry. SummerSlam is where they cap it off. Neville distracting Austin Aries. This is going to give Daniel Bryan a huge advantage if he already didn't have one. Bryan locking in the LaBelle lock, but there's no tap. Austin Aries escapes. Austin Aries drop kick from the top rope only gets a two count. Daniel Bryan kicking the chest of Austin Aries. Ooh, but it goes for a controversial pin. Only two. A lot of the people in the crowd think it was three. Daniel Bryan, top rope, elbow. Again, only two. Daniel Bryan going to the top rope again. I thought he was going to go for the flying head, but the first time he went for an elbow, he's going for the flying head, but now one, two, three, it's over. Daniel Bryan winning this matchup, working off his debt for that rivalry that he lost against Dean Ambrose. The following matchup is an Extreme Rules Tornado Tag Team matchup. Titus O'Neil, Darren Young, the prime time players, taking on the team of Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be having an Extreme Tag Team Brawl series almost to culminate at SummerSlam. I want to know who's the toughest tag team on SmackDown. We're going to find out. Harper and Rowan claim to be the toughest. Can they prove it with a win over the primetime players tonight? Luke Harper and Eric Rowan both sitting at 5-3. and three. Darren Young, Titus O'Neil, both 2-1. and one. Oh, man. Dueling crotch kicks. Oh, both teams starting off fighting dirty. Darren Young using the table to his advantage. Meanwhile, up on the ramp, Luke Harper, Titus O'Neil battling. Oh, nasty headbutt by Eric Rowan and another one. He's just going to go for it. Nasty headbutts to Darren Young. Oh, we're on the inside now. Primetime players dominating. Titus O'Neil holding Harper down. Darren Young knees to the chest. One, two, three. Shocking. Primetime players upset Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. The following matchup is a matchup to determine who will move up the ladder. Zack Ryder or R-Truth? A lot of these superstars are being allured by the hardcore title. It's easy, quick money, but it's dangerous matches. Sure, you make more money quicker, but it ends your career quicker as well. R-Truth reversing a top rope maneuver. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Zack Ryder, R-Truth, reversing back and forth. Who is going to get the final roll up and get a one, two, three? When is it gonna end? These two to so technically savvy. Finally, Zack Ryder can't get the three. Zack Ryder taunting too late. Pay dirt from our truth. One, two, no. Zack Ryder hitting the Rough Rider for one, two, three. Zack Ryder's momentum continues, and he continues to surprise me. The question is, can he continue to overcome the tougher opponents in his path up the ladder? The following matchup was a matchup booked by WWE 2K, and I love it, both because of the records that these guys have, and uh, this is a dream matchup, I think. Ryback versus Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin coming in to this matchup at 2-1. Ryback coming in at 1-1. One one. I can't wait. Baron Corbin punches, destroying Ryback. Yeet! Tosses him across the ring, manhandling the Tasmanian Devil of the WWE. Ryback setting up that knee hook clothesline. Hits it! One, two, no. DDT to the outside. Jesus. Baron Corbin, his end of days. Oh, it's over. One, two. Ah, no. 
Baron Corbin got to get into the ring before the count of 10. He does. He's going for Ryback. Referee's in the middle. Referee's in the middle of the action. Kick to the gut. No. Mito clotheslined. Oh my gosh. One, two, three. What an upset. Controversial finish between this awesome matchup. Baron Corbin losing after the referee inserts himself in between the two superstars. I've got to see a rematch. Ryback winning this one. He'll move up to 2-1. and one. The following matchup is the second Extreme Rules Tornado Tag Team match of the evening. Cesaro and Kidd taking on the Ascension. Tyson Kidd is undefeated. Connor and Victor yet to get a victory. They're both sitting at 0-1. and one. Match begins. Tyson Kidd going to utilize the ladder here. This match fought a lot on the inside. We only are showing highlights at the end of this matchup. The beginning of this match was all punches, kicks, moves, right in the middle of the ring, all action. They did not wander the arena. It stayed in the ring. Connor hitting a flapjack. Is he going to get the win here on Cesaro? One, two, no. Action back into the ring here. We got a suplex. Suplex up the ladder. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Meanwhile, Victor hit the back for her. One, two, three, it's over. Wow. The Ascension getting their first victory over another strong team. Wow. This brawl mentality of match types is doing it for the underdogs. The underdogs are finally looking like overdogs. The Ascension getting a win here over Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. And that being said, we're ready for the main event. From Houston, Texas, it is time for the main event of the evening. AJ Styles taking on D. Lo Brown. Let's get their stats up. AJ Styles coming in with $26,000 in the bank. He's got 12 and 6 as a record, 73 superstar points. He is your cruiserweight champion. It's impressive. He's facing, however, an undefeated former Nation of Domination member, D. Lo Brown. This rivalry coming about because it was randomly selected and I allowed it to go through. I like D. Lo Brown. It's for the Cruiserweight Champion Championship, which is perfect for D. Lo Brown. I really, really like it. The only thing I don't like about this version of D. Lo Brown is that it's not his best version. I really don't like when the game puts in a horrible version of a uh, of a character. And this is a horrible version of D'Lo Brown. It's like putting in stunning Stone Cold Steve Austin. Nobody plays as stunning Steve Austin. They always play as Stone Cold because why would they not? Does that make sense? D'Lo Brown versus AJ Styles. Main event. We're going to be breaking character here. I know the episodes lately have been super in character, so we're going to switch it up in this uh, while we watch this matchup. We're going to be talking a little bit about the Extreme Rules pay-per-view because, of course, AJ Styles is a part of that. So there's ties there. And I'm, I'm going to give you my thoughts on that. D'Lo Brown versus AJ Styles. First, let's see, last week... D'Lo Brown affected the match that AJ Styles had. And he did so in a way that was good for him. He has momentum. He's 3-0. I'd love to see him go 4-0. If he defeats AJ Styles here tonight, he makes $10,000. He is eligible to challenge AJ Styles for the Cruiserweight Championship. There's a lot of different ways we can go at SummerSlam for the cruiserweight title or for the uh, light heavyweight title even though the light heavyweight title is going to be a rematch neville versus austin aries the cruiserweight title is very interesting though i still have no idea who is going to get that fight at SummerSlam. I will be adding the Bullet Club, or rather just the club, Carl Anderson and... Shoot, I think I screwed that up. I think it is Carl, and, Carl, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. They will be added uh, after this 
taping after SmackDown. Uh, I did not want to change up anything between these recordings. I've been very, very lazy for the past week. I've been getting back into poker. It's poker season. Forgive me for that. I've been very lazy, but we will hopefully be getting back on track. Uh, that's another important thing about my channel right now is that I don't want to do too much. I don't want to get burnt out. So episodes are going to come out when they come out, and there's really no set schedule. Every time I set a schedule, I go off of the schedule, I lose confidence, so I'm not setting a schedule. I mean, let's talk about extreme rules a little bit here. I loved a lot of the matches. Baron Corbin vs. Dolph Ziggler was good, even though I felt like they could have done a bit more with the no DQ match other than just a low blow. Um, I also liked the Rusev Kalisto match. That one was really fun. Intercontinental match was probably match of the night. Technical wise, there's a two count. And uh, I, I really liked the main event with Roman Reigns. The Asylum match was way too long. I don't know what they were doing there, but it was way too long. I was very confused. I was like, why is this still going? I wasn't necessarily bored. I think the big problem with the Asylum match was the commentary. The commentary was not believable, and it made that match super boring. If you were in live in the arena, I'm sure that match was awesome. But over the commentary, it was just god-awful. AJ Styles hitting that brain buster. It might be over here for D'Lo Brown. I hope not. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Come on, D'Lo. I gave Natalia D'Lo's uh, sky-high finisher because I like that finisher. And if D'Lo Brown doesn't have a good week here or a good month in this rivalry against AJ Styles, which he just reversed a finisher, which is amazing, uh, then at least we do get to see the sky-high a bit more. And it's perfect for Natalia. I really like it. Call it the heartbreaker. Sky-high connecting. One, two... There's a kick out. I knew he'd kick out there. He still has a finisher, I'm sure. Uh, you know, in fact... Oh, man. You know, I'm no, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it a mystery. I was going to put the HUD back on. But I, I like the HUD off. It's a little bit more exciting to watch. Maybe I'll put the HUD back on. I'll put the HUD back on. I'm going to put the HUD back on. Because I want, let's see, where, uh, that. Because I just want it for this match, at least. Wait, 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 wait. Did that not work? Did I, did I mess something up? Hit point, stamina gauge on, accept. Am I screwing something up here? What's happening? I want it on. Hmm. All right, let's turn it off. Now let's turn it on. Damn it. That's annoying. Um, okay. Okay. That's really annoying. Uh, I'm certain that we've had it on before. Hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Extreme Rules was okay. It wasn't awesome, but it was okay. I loved the main event, I loved Rusev winning, I loved all that fun stuff, but, uh, I mean, the Divas match was fine, uh, the, the Asylum match was very slow, it was the commentary's fault, I feel like, most of the pay-per-view. Get rid of Byron, you gotta get Corey Graves in there, you gotta. AJ Styles taking D'Lo to the top, an elbow from D'Lo Brown. Huge splash, and he's not going to go for the pin. This is awesome. He, so far, he's reversing at the right points. You know, in like on paper, he shouldn't stand a chance against AJ Styles. But he's getting the job done, and I like that. Come on, D'Lo. I'm a fan of D'Lo Brown. Again, if you want to watch with me on the WWE Network, 
at this time, I think I'm on episode 303 of Monday Night Raw. When SmackDown debuts, I will be watching those as well. So, if you want to follow along and uh, have some fun while I go through the history of wrestling, go for it. Because this, this is the time when I didn't watch wrestling. I didn't get to see D'Lo Brown with Victoria. Or not Victoria, um, Ivory. Oh, come on, D'Lo. Thank you. That would have been a horrible way to end it. Come on, D'Lo. I hope he wins tonight because I want to see him wrestle at SummerSlam. He's got a couple weeks to win a match. But uh, I'm not going to manipulate it so that he's in a match. Earlier on the card, I did manipulate most of those matches. The only one that was created by uh, the, the, the game was Baron Corbin versus Ryback, and I liked that matchup so much. But all the other ones were just kind of silly. I wanted to do something else with this SmackDown card. Yes! <laughs> you better recognize. I love D'Lo Brown. Nice leg drop. Going for the win. One. Two. Kick out. Good. That's a good kick out. It might have drained the finisher that AJ Styles could hit for the, um, whatever that John Cena type kick out move is. Tilt the world. Slam. He's going to the top. Maybe going for a frog splash. He's got to have the chest protector. I can't believe they don't have that for him. Maybe I'll change his attire for SummerSlam. If he makes it. Elbow drop. Come on, D'Lo. What's funny is the stuff that the superstar right there is doing right now, that's what D'Lo does in the middle of matches. It's, it's hilarious. Again, you should watch it with me. Episode 303. Oh, moonsault. Oh, damn it. Damn it. Oh, come on, D'Lo. Reverse. Shit. Damn it. Busted him open. It's over. One, two, three. Shit, man. He got caught. He got caught. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to talk about Extreme Rules, let me know below. Of course, Seth Rollins coming back. I'm super stoked about that. Wrestling's in a good way right now. Even Roman Reigns is doing good. Uh, I like him in the role of him being a, a, a dick, almost. So, let me know what you thought about Extreme Rules below. If you're following along on the network, you can talk about episode 303 of Monday Night Raw down below as well. And, uh, damn, D'Lo, you were so close. This is where he screwed up. Bam! AJ Styles. Well, I'm going to add in Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows into this. And they're going to be on SmackDown and expect them to debut next week. Maybe. Again, I shouldn't make guarantees, but that's what I'm looking for. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. It has been another episode of GM Mode. Slap a like on it. Please. <laughs> Prophet God. GG. <laughs> Damn it, D-Lo.